awake. Oh. Are we there already? Just about. Oh. I need a cigarette. Do you want one? Oh, wait. Have you got the passports there? Mm, right here. Yeah, well, are you sure Daisy isn't going to wake? Daisy? Daisy, honey. I gave her half a mug of done. She'll be out for a bit. Daisy. Yep, she's out. This is the border. I love you, Luke. We're gonna get through this, baby. You'll see. Hi there, how you doing? <laughs> We're doing fine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Could you turn your engine off, please? Mm -hmm. May I see your passports? Honey? Where yeah. are you heading, sir? Just over to New Brunswick to see family. How long are you going? I don't know, just a few days, I guess. You had a lot of luggage for a few days. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> the child doesn't have a passport? Uh, she's only four. She's on my passport. Uh, there, you see? Daisy. Oh, okay. How long have you been married? Uh, five years. Has your union been blessed in the eyes of the good Lord? Yes. Can I see the certificate? Honey? Sure. Here. Uh, this is the old certificate. Were you married in the church? No. No, but we've since had the marriage blessed. Can I see the certificate, sir? Honey, we, we did bring, oh, didn't sure, we? Or did, sure did we, we did. leave that at home? Oh, I, I don't know. Um... Uh, officer, I, th I think we, we might have left it at home. Okay. No, but do we have to have it? I, I can assure you. We are man and wife in the eyes of the good Lord. Well, that's okay. So I just need to ask you a few questions. You got married in the bad days, and you now have the marriage blessed. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have either of you been divorced? No. Both of you? No. No. Was the child born before or after your blessing? Before. After. No. It's after, yeah, honey. I think after. Okay, if you could just pull your car over to the side here, I just need to run a check on the computer. Why? Is there is there a problem? Just do as I ask, please, sir. <laughs> Come on, bud. We, we've had a long drive. Is, is there any way we can sort this out? Sure, just pull in over here. Look, look, things were different before. You know that. You can't just change all the laws overnight. Actually, sir, no one's changed the laws. They're in the good book for all to see. They have been for a long, long time. You just failed to observe them. I'm trying to cooperate with you here. Hand me the keys to your car. Don't you feel ashamed of yourself? Hand me the keys to your car, sir. Just do it. Got some assistance over here? No, 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 no. Luke! No, this is bad, honey. We've, we've got to get out of here. Oh, what's happening? It's all right, honey. Mommy's here. Where are we going to go? I'm not going to let them take you away. Look, there's nowhere for us to hide. Slow down. Baby, oh, honey, don't cry. Mommy's here. I can't take this. Just relax. You're making things worse. This is crazy. It's doing my mind. I can't no. stand it. I can't stand it. Look. What's happened to the world? What's happened? I would like to believe this is a story I'm telling. If it's a story, then I have control over the ending. Then there will be an ending and real life will come after it. I can pick up where I left off. But it isn't a story I'm telling. Can you hear me? Wake up. You think she's faking it? I'll give her another dose.
Are you awake? Wake up! How are you feeling? Where am I? You had a shock. Where's... she? What have you done with her? She is in good hands. I want to see her. She's with people who are fit. You are unfit. But you want the best for her, don't you? I want to see her. Where am I? We are going to teach you to be a better person. I want to see my husband. Men aren't allowed in here except doctors and guardians. Where's my husband? Oh, no. Let's not pretend. You know he wasn't your husband. Not in the eyes of the good Lord. I want to see Luke. I think that's quite enough now. But I need to know, please. I need to know. Doctor. Please. Doctor. No, don't make I me. I think she's had enough. Don't make me sleep, please. No, no, just, no, no, just no, no, no. lie back, lie back. Count to ten. Please. Count to ten. Her. That's right. She's got a dress on. Has she indeed? A pretty. She. She thought we were going to a picnic. A picnic. <laughs> We didn't want her to know where we were really going. Is that so? Yes, we didn't want to tell My name is Aunt Lydia. I run this establishment, which, for those of you who don't know, is called the Rachel and Leah Re-Education Center. It is one of several colleges for the training of handmaids and is funded by central government. I want to tell you about the old world. Better still, let me show you something. Aunt Elizabeth, play the video. They called it the summer of love and with the temperature well up into the 90s, it's no surprise that the words the last women used to make of themselves. They want to have fun, to enjoy the music. And In the park, lying on blankets, men and women together sometimes, oiling themselves like roast meat on a spit, bare backs and shoulders on the street, in public, and legs, not even stockings on them. Gilbert's holidays are designed to help gay men get together and have fun. Right they so called it freedom. Do all the work, you do all the fun. Check out the hot tubs on the freedom. Or the nightclub. You want to meet young, friendly college girls. To do as anyone pleases. Beautiful girls on our books just waiting to meet you. Hi there, I'm the plumber. I heard you have a leak. Yeah, it's in Freedom London. for women to go to work like a man. Freedom not to get married. Men Freedom to divorce. Call 900-555-SEXX. Freedom to flirt with women looking for women. Sex. Call 1-900-555-GALS. Freedom to indulge in the most depraved sexual acts. Freedom to murder babies before they were even born. Yeah, sit down on the bed. What kind of a world did we create? How did we move so far away from the standards set for us by the good Lord? No wonder things used to happen. No wonder women were exploited, abused, raped, even murdered. She was found in a shallow grave just 200 yards from the road. Police say she had been brutally beaten about the head and... Who is it? Who's there? There is more than one kind of freedom. Freedom to... And freedom from. In the days of anarchy, it was freedom to. Now, you are being given freedom from. Don't underrate it. I'll be honest with you. 
Not all of you will make it through this establishment. Some of you will fall on dry ground. Some of you will be strangled by thorns. Some of you are shallow rooted. I want you to think of yourselves as seeds. We are planting a new society. Those of you who make it through will be the founding mothers of a new and better world. Are you awake? Sort of. This used to be my high school. Really? Before, this was the gymnasium, not a dormitory. They used to have dances in here. Shh, not so loud. We're not allowed to talk. They took my baby away. They took my daughter. They said if I was good, I might get him back. I don't think so. They put them with other families. No, they said if I'm a good girl, they would. Listen, they're not going to do anything for you. This is a bad, bad situation. Things have got way out of hand. No, it's my fault, you see. I've been a bad person. I deserve to be punished. You're crazy. No. That's why I'm here. I've done so many things, you see, immoral, like a dance is here, things a girl shouldn't do. Maybe I was influenced, TV. But, oh, you wouldn't believe her. See, I didn't know about the good book then. I had so many bad thoughts. Now I want to learn. I want to learn to be a good person. Yeah, sure. You're the same, you know. Only the bad girls come here. We have to learn to be good. Can you be quiet? I want to get some sleep. The night time is my own, to do with as I will, my time out. Where shall I go? Where shall I go back to? You know, I get a lot of people asking for advice. Now, just yesterday, I had a call from an acquaintance, a hotshot advertising executive. Oh, yes. Well, she said, my husband and I don't get on anymore. All right, I said, what's the problem? Well, I don't know, she said. We've just grown apart. Uh, grown apart. Mm. Grown She's on. Apart. It's that Serena Joy uh, woman again. Come and look. Do I hear this phrase. Are you kidding? She's the fan. She don't want to watch her. Oh, I just love this woman. You never She's see such a other. bitch. <laughs> If you are so busy working, can you believe money, this stuff? Moira, you're your getting ashes on my sofa. Yeah. God, I cannot believe people can take her seriously. To pay for the babysitter you don't need, to look after the kids because you're never at home, to pay for all those frozen dinners you don't need because you don't have time to cook. Well, of course you're gonna grow apart. Women are the. We're doing the spoof letters page in the magazine, Serena. My car won't start. What shall I do? Stop trying to be a man. You know, that kind of thing. Hope it doesn't nuts. Yeah, as if she'd even notice. We've got a big readership. Well, considering we're just a small town magazine. It's much bigger than our sales because people pass the magazine around once they've read it. We had a survey done. You're getting ashes on the sofa. Use the ashtray. I'm sorry. Why have you grown apart? Because you are not behaving like a wife. You want my advice, lady? Be a wife. Be a wife. Let's praise the Lord together. Well, let's go out for a beer. Uh, I've got to do a presentation tomorrow morning at the library. 
What about? Transferring books to computer disk. Why would you do that? Mm, to cut down on storage space. Wow. I've got to finish an article on date rape. Date rape? You're so trendy. <laughs> Doesn't sound like some kind of dessert. Date rape. <laughs> so, get your coat. We're going for a beer. We can work later, right? I don't know. Wait a minute. Has something happened to you? New man in your life, perhaps? All right, I'll come. I'm boring five bucks off you, okay? I don't approve of it. Oh, Moira, I can't believe you. No, he's a married man. You're poaching on another woman's ground. Luke isn't a fish. <laughs> he's a human being. He can make his own decisions. Besides, he doesn't love his wife. You're rationalizing. Hi. Hi. I'm Janine. I'll be your waitress tonight. Hi, Janine. Can I get you started off with something to drink? Mm-hmm. Two beers? Mm. Great. Coming right up. Anyway, you're not in love with him. How can you say that? You're in love with the hotels, the covert oh. meetings, the excitement. You're in love with getting away from that cockroach-infested apartment, the dripping sink, and the noisy students upstairs. You'll get over him. Well, you got any more smokes? <coughs> Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob was angry with Rachel and said, can I take the place of God who denied thee children? And she said, Here is my slave girl, Bila. Lie with her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. So she gave him her slave girl, Bila. And Jacob lay with her. I'm going to read it to you again. I want you to pay attention. Give me children or else I die. And Jacob was angry with Rachel and said, King Can I take this? Thank, Thank you. Thank you for creating me, woman. Making me fruitful. fruitful. Mortify my flesh that I may be multiplied. No making a spectacle of yourself, filled. Janine. Be God, King of the universe. Thank you. Thank you for creating me, woman. Making me fruitful. Mortify my flesh. See? Here, this is birth rate per thousand. See the slippery slope down, down here, past the line of replacement. There was no one cause. Of course, some women believed there would be no future. They thought the world would explode. That was the excuse they used. They said there was no use in breeding. They were lazy women. They were sluts. Well, the world didn't explode. <laughs> this is year zero, and all of us here will lick you into shape. There were newcomers most nights, carried in drugged and wounded by the odds. It was only a matter of time before Moira arrived. before you get caught. Where can we talk? The washrooms. After testifying tomorrow, we, we get a short break. Testifying? It's a kind of therapy. You'll see. Oh. Just meet me in the install, okay? <coughs> All right. This is interesting, everyone. Now, you tell me, Janine, how did it make you feel? Aunt Elizabeth once headed a Weight Watchers franchise operation in Iowa. She's good at testifying. I felt unclean. I wanted to wash it away. And what do you think of the men who did this to you? I wanted to castrate them. <laughs> she told the same story last week, how she was gang raped at 14 and had an abortion. It may not even be true. At testifying, it's safer to make things up than to say you have nothing to reveal. But whose fault was it? 
Who led them on, Janine? Anyone? Her fault. Who led them on? You. Me? Yes. Who led them on? The, well, I guess they just led each other on, you know, like guys do. Wrong. Anyone else? Who led them on? She did. And why did God allow such a terrible thing to happen? Why do you think, Janine? To teach me a lesson. It was my fault. I led them on. I deserve the pain. <clears throat> Very good, Janine. You see, all flesh is weak. They can't help it. God made them that way, but he did not make you that way. He made you different. It is up to you to set the boundaries. <coughs> Jeez, this is a loony bin. Who was that? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's this cold I've got. <coughs> I'm doing my best, you know. I'm trying to give you the best chance you can have. Don't think it's easy for me, either. The washroom used to be for boys. The mirrors have been replaced by oblongs of dull gray metals. There were incidents in the washrooms at first. There were cuttings, drownings. But the urinals are still there, white enamel with yellow stains. They look oddly like babies' coffins. this morning. Can I get you some coffee to begin with? Oh, Christ, snap out of it, Janine. You have a nice day now. <gasps> what did you hit me for? Wasn't it good? I can bring you another. You didn't have to hit me. Don't you know what they'll do? Look at me. My name is Moira, and this is the Red Center. Look at me. Moira? I don't know any Moira. They won't send you to the infirmary, so don't even think about it. They won't mess around with trying to cure you. They won't even bother to send you to the colonies. You go too far away and they just take you up to the chemistry lab and shoot you. Then they burn you up with the garbage like an unwoman, so forget it. I want to go home now. Jesus, God, that's enough. She'll be here in one minute, I promise you. So put your goddamn clothes on and shut up. I want my baby. Come on. That's right. Off with your nightgown. On with your dress. She does that again and I'm not here. You just have to slap her like that. You can't let her go slipping over the edge. That stuff is catching. I'm Mike Moore and this is World News Hour. Luke. Coming up. President says... Luke. If I'm going to live here with you, I want you to get rid of her clothes. I can't live like this. See my wallet. Luke. I'm late for work. You feed the cat. You're not listening to me. I heard you. If you don't get rid of your wife's clothes, I'm gonna start wearing them. I'm late. I gotta go. Bye. Local residents are angry that such a man is allowed to wander the I have them. These attacks of the past, like faintness. A wave sweeping over my head. Hello? Hello? Husband thieving bitch. 
Honey? What's wrong? It's your wife again. Not again. I'm gonna call her and oh, straighten no, this thing out. No, that's just what she wants. It just makes things worse. Just li leave it. Hello? Luke, is that you? I want this to stop. Do you want? understand? I want to talk You know to what? You. I don't care. Please. You leave us alone. Are you there? Moira. I've got to get out of here. No, no, Moira. I'm going nuts. Don't try anything. I'll fake sick. They send an ambulance. I've seen it. You'll only get as far as the hospital. Well, at least it'll be a change. They'll find you out. Don't worry, I'm good at it. When I was a kid in high school, I cut out vitamin C. I got scurvy. In the early stages, they can't diagnose it. And then you just start it again and you're fine. I'll hide my vitamin pills. Moira, don't. They send two guys with you in the ambulance. Think about it. They must be starved for it. Shit, they aren't even allowed to put their hands in their pockets. The possibilities are... You in there. Hands up. Some of you, no doubt, will have had your sleep disturbed during the night, caused by the antics of this girl here. We come down hard on people who break the rules, but we're not uncharitable. This girl can consider herself very lucky. She's being given a second chance. Moira, why are you doing this to us? Why am I... I think we all have a right to know. Don't you like it here? I... I don't know. We all suffer, Moira, by your actions. It says to me you don't take your new calling seriously. That hurts. A handmaid is a position of honor. I want to invite anyone in the class here to ask Moira about what she did. Anyone? Yes, Janine. I just... Stand up. Come to the front. <clears throat> I just want to say how much hurt you caused me and all of us. We were so concerned for you, Moira when we thought you were ill and all, and then when Aunt Lydia said that you were faking, I, I like, how could you? And, and all Aunt Lydia's done for us in a handmaid's a position of honor. Where's your pride? Thank you, Jenny. You see what you've done, Moira. Who else? You. Stand up. Come in. Out front. Now, what's your question to Moira? Moira. Moira. Yes? Why <coughs> did you run away? Good question. Moira? I'm sorry. Yeah. Eventually, you will see things clearly. You will cooperate with us. All of you. For some, the process will take longer. I recommend to you all the path of least resistance. You are a transitional generation. It is hardest for you. 
We understand the sacrifices you are being expected to make. For the ones who come after you, it'll be easier. They will accept their duties with willing hearts. It's strange now to think about having a job. All those women having jobs, hard to imagine now, but thousands of them had jobs, millions. It was considered the normal thing. Are uh, these ready for the shredder? Uh, that pile there. I worked in a library, transferring books to computer disk to cut down on storage space and replacement costs, they said. Diskers, we called ourselves. After the books were transferred, they were put in the shredder. Uh, can I keep these ones, though? I thought I might take them home with me. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Well, I don't know. A book might be worth something one day. <laughs> <laughs> sure, take as many as you want. <laughs> it wasn't a great job, but it suited me. Flexible hours, especially since Luke and I got together and had Daisy. Can you just uh, put these in the back, honey? I'm going to put Daisy in her seat. Yeah. She comes back to me at different ages. This is how I know she's not a ghost. If she was a ghost, she would be the same age always. Uh, honey, hmm? did you get the hamburger meat? Oh, no, I forgot. I'm sorry. You don't need it. You eat too much meat. I do not eat too much meat. Men need more meat than women. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. There have been studies. Men and women are different. Are you listening to your daddy here, honey? Fine, if you want the hamburger, go yeah. get it. Yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go get it. You unload the cart. Oh, thank you. That's really helpful. <laughs> it was a Saturday. Mommy's be right back. <laughs> Which was when Luke and I did the week shopping. Daisy was 11 months. You know, your daddy isn't very helpful, is he, honey? It was before things started getting really bad. Excuse me. Excuse me, what are you doing? This child is mine. Okay, give her back to me. Can somebody help me, no. please? Let go of me. It's my child. Just give her to me. Just let go. No, you're hurting her. No. Just give her to me. It's all right, Daisy. Mommy's here. Mommy's got you. He sent me a sign. Who sent you a sign? The Lord promised me this child. Uh, this woman. The Lord gave me this child. Steal my baby. All right, all right, all right. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. The Lord promised me a child. The Lord promised me a child. Okay, Mavis, 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 would you call the police, please? Would you call the police, please? Okay, okay, we're going to get you some help, Mavis. Okay. Come on, Daisy. Come on, sweetie. It's okay. Mommy's here. Mommy's got you. Well, again, I apologize. I'm very, very sorry that this happened outside my store. This kind of thing seems to be happening more and more. Really? Mm, but I guess that's only natural, huh? Natural? <laughs> well, everyone wants kids. Yeah. But then for women, I guess that urge is uh, stronger. Yes. Now, would you like to call anyone? Uh, no, it's all right. My husband is here. Um, thank you for your help. Oh, no problem. Have a nice day now. I'm too tired to go on with this story. Here's a different story, a better one. This is what happened to Moira. I heard it from Alma, who heard it from Dolores, who heard it from Janine. Janine heard it from Aunt Lydia. There can be alliances in such a place. There will always be alliances, of one kind or another. Come in. Blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. Close the door. Something terrible has happened. Janine, do you know about it? No, Aunt Lydia. Because if you do, I will be very disappointed in you. As the Lord is my witness. Moira is no longer with us. Oh. Is she dead? No. She's gone. During exercises, she asked to go to the washroom. Aunt Elizabeth? Aunt Elizabeth, the toilet's overflowing. No. 
not again. Can you come and fix it? Someone is doing this on purpose. If this continues, I promise we'll ration the toilet paper. Where are you? In here. No. Disgusting. Let's move out of the way. We need to take the top off of this one. I'll stick it all the way in. I'll puncture your lung. Shut up. She had dismantled one of the toilets and taken out this. Oh, what is it? It's part of the cistern. It doesn't matter. Aunt Elizabeth couldn't see what was poking her in the back, but she was a brave woman. Yes. But not foolhardy. She did what Moira said. All right, let's go. Moira, oh, shut up. They're going to blame me for this, you know. Just shut your mouth and walk. All right, all right. In here. The exit's that way. Why, why are we going into the furnace room? Take off your clothes. Oh, no. Please, please. Take no. them off. Give them to me. Turn around. Oh, not too tight. Please. I don't know why you're doing this to me, Myra. Open your mouth. I have always been fair and honest with you. Wider. Uh -huh. There. Don't struggle or you'll choke. I could kill you, you know. I could injure you so badly you'd never feel good in your body again. Just remember I didn't if it ever comes to that. All right? She walked straight out of the front door. The guards thought she was an aunt. She seemed to know where she was going. She even saluted at the gate and disappeared. She is a cunning and dangerous woman. She treated Aunt Elizabeth appallingly. So, Janine, here is what I want you to do. I want you to keep your ears open. Maybe one of the others was involved. Yes. And come and tell me about it, won't you, dear? If you hear anything. Yes, Aunt Lydia. Yes. The story passed among us that night in the semi-darkness under our breath from bed to bed. Moira was out there somewhere. Moira had power now. She'd been set loose. She'd set herself loose. I think we found this frightening. Moira was like an elevator with open sides. She made us dizzy. Already we were finding these walls secure. But when you go from this place to answer your calling, to take your positions in your designated households, it is not the husbands you have to watch out for. It's the wives. You should always try to imagine what they must be feeling. All of you here have been blessed with the most treasured gift a woman can have. Don't be surprised that some wives will resent you for it. <laughs> of course they'll resent you. It's only natural. Try to feel for them. Try to pity them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. You must realize that they are defeated women. <laughs> they have been unable to... Ah. <laughs> this is what happened. It's now 24 hours since the first incident occurred. The message from the White House is that everyone should keep calm. It was after the catastrophe, after they shot the president, and the army declared a state of emergency. Outside the White House for more. Mark, is there any further news? Yes, Mike, we have been told that the state of emergency is a temporary measure to curb fringe elements within the country. They had worked their way into the system. They had people in powerful positions in schools, local councils, Congress. And the advice we are being given is that everyone should remain at home if they possibly can. But as time passed, we lived, as usual, by ignoring. Hmm. 
And is there any indication of how long... Ignoring isn't the same as ignorance. You have to work at it. Are you planning to drop by the store on your way to work? I could. But they didn't deliver today. Again. Look, could you ask them what's happening? Uh, don't worry, I'll take care of it. With a massive power struggle within the corridors of the White House... Then, before we knew it, everything had changed. First, they shut down most of the television stations and newspapers. Hi there. Hi. Um, we didn't receive our paper this morning, and we haven't for three days. Oh, well, you're, you're not the only one, honey. Really? Yeah, we haven't had any newspapers all week. Why not? A national distribution problem? Oh. I don't know, something like that. Oh, they didn't mention it on television. No, I, I guess not. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Can I get you anything? Um, yeah, a pack of Marlboros. Uh, go. Thanks. I see that, uh... Porno Mart across the street is closed down. Oh, yes, it was high time somebody did something. <laughs> well, did they just close it or what? Well, who knows? Who cares? <laughs> Maybe they just moved him somewhere else, whatever. But you really got to hand it to this new council. They have cleaned up the area a lot. You know, in the evenings, if you came around here before, you'd get people hanging around, mm -hmm. hookers and things. Mm -hmm. You don't get that anymore. That's got to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see ya. <laughs> see ya. Can I help you? The next morning, after dropping Daisy off at school, no children walked to school anymore. There had been too many disappearances. She was three or four now. I stopped by the same store for another pack. Excuse me. Hmm. Can I help you? Um, yeah, a pack of Marlboros, please. I was smoking more these days. It was the tension. You could feel it. Thanks. Is she sick? No. Oh. The woman who's usually here. How should I know? Your card's not registering. Uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, this number's not valid. Well, that's ridiculous. I've got plenty of money in my account. Just try it again. It's not valid. See the red light? It means it's not valid. Well, you must have made a mistake. Try it again. Yeah, see? Well, there's obviously some mix-up somewhere. I'll phone them from the office. You do that. Now. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. I don't believe this. At about two o'clock after lunch, my boss called me into his office. Hey. You wanted to see me? Uh, yes, come in. I, uh, have something to tell you. What? I'm sorry, but it's the law. I really am sorry. <laughs> For what? Are you all right? I have to let you go. <sighs> it's, it's the law. I, I have to. It's, it's not just you. I have to let you all go. We're being fired? But why? Uh, not fired. Let go. You can't work here anymore. It's the law. How can you do this? It isn't me. You, you don't understand. Please, go now. They're outside. If you don't go now, they'll come in themselves. They gave me ten minutes. Just, just leave the machines. Just go. When I got back to the house, nobody was there. Luke was still at work. My daughter was at school. I tried phoning the bank again, but only got the same recording. I'm sorry. The number you have reached is not in service at this time. No further information is available. I'm sorry. The number you... Hello? Moira. Hi. I've been fired. Okay. First, we'll have a drink. Where's the corkscrew? It's right in front of you. Tried getting anything on your CompuCard today? Yes, my card got rejected. 
They've frozen them. Any account with an F on it instead of an M, all they need to do is push a few buttons. We're cut off. But I've got over $2,000 in the bank. Women can't hold property anymore. It's a new law. Turned on the TV today? No. It's on there, all over the place. This is... I, mean, I can't believe. I'm not at all surprised. I always knew this is where we were heading. So they've confiscated all my money. Well, Luke can use your comp account for you. They'll transfer your number to him, or that's what they say. Husbands or male next of kin. Yeah, but what about you? I'll go underground. Some of the gays can take over our numbers and buy us things we need. But why? Why did they? They had to do it that way. The comp accounts and the jobs both at once. Can you picture the airports otherwise? They don't want us going anywhere. You can bet on that. I went to pick Daisy up from school. I drove with exaggerated care. They had set up roadblocks and were checking everyone's identity cards. Honey, I'm home. By the time Luke got home, I was sitting at the kitchen table. She was drawing with felt pens at her own little table in the corner, where her paintings were taped up next to the refrigerator. I heard. On the radio, driving home. Oh, Luke. Don't worry. It's only temporary. Did they say why? We'll get through it. You don't know what it's like. I feel as if somebody cut off my feet. It's, it's only a job. So I guess you get all the money and I'm not even dead. You know, I will always take care of you. Luke, you're already beginning to patronize me. Well... You're already beginning to get paranoid. There were marches, of course. A lot of women, and some men. But they were smaller than you might have thought. I guess people were scared. And when it was known that the police, or the army, or whoever they were, would open fire almost as soon as any of the marches even started, the marches stopped. There is no official confirmation of the number killed, but it a few is things were blown be up, ten, including three generations of a single family, post office, subway stations. Fatalities. But as you can imagine, Ted, it is chaotic here and very difficult. But to you could never be sure who was doing it. The police are saying nothing, and there is no indication yet of who is responsible for this. Yet another. It could have been the army to justify the computer searches and the other Mark ones, Klauski the door to doors. In Philadelphia. Hey, honey. Did you have a nice day? Mm. Yeah, terrific. I've shampooed the carpet, I've baked some cookies, I've ironed the laundry, I've got your supper ready. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. okay. After a few weeks, I started to behave <gasps> irrationally. Okay. I tried not to cry in front of Daisy and at mealtimes. Okay. Okay. During the day when Daisy was at school, I would sit beside the bedroom window, staring out. I didn't know many of the neighbors, and when we met, in the elevator or in the corridors outside our apartment, we were careful to exchange nothing more than the ordinary greeting. Blessed be the fruit. Uh, yes, uh, may the Lord open. Nobody wanted to be reported for disloyalty. each other. Luke, don't talk to me like that. Nobody's taken anything away from you. All right. It's not particularly pleasant for me either. Really? Yes. Really. Huh? The night before we left the house, that last time, I was walking through the rooms. We'd packed what we could fit in the car. I was just walking through here and there, looking at things, at the arrangement we had made together for our life. I had some idea that I would be able to remember afterwards what it had looked like. The 
than Luke had a thought. The cat. Cat? We can't just leave her here. Why can't we take her with us? You don't take a cat for a weekend trip across the border. Well, we have to do something with her. We can't just leave her outside. Luke. She's just gonna hang around and meow at the door. Someone will notice that we were gone. Well, we could give her away. I mean, one of the neighbors might take her in. We, Luke, we can't. I'll take care of it. Where is it? Just in the bedroom under the bed. I should have gone with him, taken that small responsibility. I should at least have asked him about it afterwards so he didn't have to carry it alone. Because that little sacrifice, that snuffing out of love, was done for my sake as well. Instead, I sat in the living room, hands folded in my lap. All right. Get Daisy. Time to go. And when you look back at your time here, I hope and pray that you will look back with a thankful heart and remember what we have done for you. Myself, Aunt Elizabeth, Aunt Helena, Aunt Sarah, and the others. The future is in your hands. Grasp it. Now, girls, go forth and multiply. <laughs> If you're happy, if you're she thought we were going on a picnic. If you're happy, if you We didn't want her to know where we were really going. We, we didn't want her to tell by mistake. Reveal anything. If we were stopped. We didn't want to lay upon her the burden of our truth. Stopping. It's a Saturday morning in September. Can I see your passports? Sure, honey. It's a beautiful day, officer. Praise the Lord. Beautiful. Praise be. Supposed to get some rain, though, later. Really? Yeah, storm's coming in. Huh. Just heard the weather report. You drive safely now, okay? God bless you. Have a nice day. Pretty good, huh? You all right, honey? I'm fine. But you're white as a sheet. That was only a checkpoint. There's gonna be a few more of those before we reach the border. At least we know the passports are good. Hmm? Just relax. We'll get out. Everything's normal, right? Right. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. That's not normal. Happy is not normal. Happy will arouse suspicions, I swear. What, I'm not allowed to be happy? No. No, definitely not. No one's happy anymore. Well, what does Daisy think? Hey, is Daddy allowed to be happy, honey? If you're happy, you're happy. Ah, uh, see? Okay, then, everybody. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Come on. Come on, Mom. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going. 
I try to remember what they looked like. I try to hold them still behind my eyes, their faces, like pictures in an album. But they won't stay still for me. They move. There's a smile and it's gone. Their features curl and bend as if the paper is burning. Blackness eats them. Stay with me. Stay with me. But they won't. It's my fault. I'm forgetting too much. In episode one of The Handmaid's Tale, the part of Offred was played by Marsha Dietlin, Luke by Christopher Burns, Daisy by Matilda O'Neill, Aunt Lydia by Marion Seldes, Janine by Emma Roberts, Moira by Tasha Lawrence, Serena Joy by Leslie Hendricks, Aunt Elizabeth by Peggotty Price. Other parts were played by Earl Hindman, Dylan Chalfie, Kristin Marks, Bruce Sabbath, Edward Tully, Harry Ditson, and Joseph May. The original score was composed by Sasha Putnam, Nick Russell Pavia, and Mitch Ogugwa. The Handmaid's Tale was a Goldhawk Universal production for BBC Radio 4. It was produced by Jane Quill and dramatised and directed by John Dryden. Not so many years ago, classrooms would be filled with the happy, smiling faces of children. It was not unusual for a single class to have as many as 40 children in it. Ex-music teacher David Warren remembers teaching in the late 1990s. I always wanted to get up in the mornings. I enjoyed my job. I like working with kids, but you know, I don't think any of us really understood how privileged we were. We were the last generation of teachers ever to experience a classroom of children. Can you imagine 30 children in a room together? My word. So, you're the new one. This would be the fruit. Indeed. Hmm. Well, you might as well come in. Shut the door behind you. In here. Kids are so quick to learn. We used to do shows, musicals, for parents to come and see. All the kids. He said I would never walk. That I would spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. I proved them wrong. What happened? An attack. Got shot here in the hip. Fanatic. That's terrible. What happens? So, let's have a look at you. You stand here where I can see you. So, old what's-his-face didn't work out then. No, ma'am. Mm, tough luck on him. This is your second, isn't it? Third, ma'am. Well, not so good for you either. <laughs> oh, pass me my cigarettes. Hello, God bless. I'm Mike Man. Moore, on the table. This is the Gilead with God World News Hour. Coming up. Food shortages may soon be over with the near capture of countless gorillas in the Appalachian Highlands. Birth rates are up for the second year running. And sport, weather, and business news all coming up in the next hour in the Gilead. With what are you looking at? World news hour with me, Mike Nothing, ma'am. Have you never seen a cigarette before? Uh, of course. <laughs> Just not for a long time. Oh. 
It's one of the perks of my position as a wife. A wife. Would you like one? Go on. Headmaidens don't smoke, ma'am, and it's not conducive to childbirth. Oh, very good. <laughs> Look, I know you're not stupid. I've read your file. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is like a business transaction. But if I get trouble, I'll give trouble back. You understand? Yes, ma'am. I can hit you, you know, if I want to. A scriptural precedent. Yes, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am. You're not a domestic. As for my husband, he's just that. My husband. I want that perfectly clear. To death do us part, it's final. Yes. It's one of the things we fought for. Praise the Lord. Indeed. We have one domestic here, Rita. She cooks and cleans. She doesn't do shopping. That's your role. It'll be good for you to get out from time to time. You can liaise with her. My husband also has a driver, Joseph. He helps fix things around the house, too. So if something's bust, tell Rita and she'll get Joseph around. I think that's all. I want to see as little of you as possible. I expect you feel the same way about me. You can go to your room now, Alfred. Rita will show you. Thank you. Experts say the decrease in unbabies or shredders is due to a dramatic decrease in radiation contamination seeping across from the Badlands. Here in Connecticut alone, doctors and midwives are working around the clock with a record. My name isn't Alfred. That's the name they gave me. They give me a different name at each house. At the last one, it was of Stephen. Before that, of Bill. Of Stephen, of Bill. I guess the owner of this house, the commander, is called Fred. I have another name, which nobody uses now because it's forbidden. I tell myself it doesn't matter. Your name is like your telephone number, useful only to others. But what I tell myself is wrong. It does matter. I keep the knowledge of this name like something hidden, some treasure I'll come back to dig up one day. I think of this name as buried. This name has an aura around it, like an amulet, some charm that survived from an unimaginably distant past. I lie in my single bed at night with my eyes closed and the name floats there behind my eyes, not quite within reach, shining in the dark. Blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. Are you ready to go? Yes. We aren't allowed to go shopping except in twos. This is supposed to be for our protection. But the truth is that she is my spy, as I am hers. The war is going well, I hear. Praise be. We've been sent good weather. Which I receive with joy. Blessed be the fruit. Blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. This is a beautiful May day. They've defeated more of the rebels since yesterday. Praise be. What were they? Baptists. They had a stronghold in the Blue Hills. They smoked them out. Praise be. Sometimes I wish she would just shut up and let me walk in peace. I want to think. God, I wish my friend Moira was here. Hi. Hi. May I inspect your passes, The please? barrier is patrolled by two guardians. Thank you. Guardians Thank of you. faith. Please wait here. Wait there. This one is very young. All zits and a fluffy mustache. The young ones are often the most dangerous, the most fanatical, the jumpiest with their guns. May the Lord go with you. Have a nice day. Doctors lived here once. Lawyers, university professors. 
Luke and I used to walk together, sometimes along these streets. We used to talk about buying a house like one of these, an old, big house, fixing it up. Follow me, please. Today, there's a group of Japanese tourists on a tour. This is the heart of Gilead. You'll notice that the women are dressed in different colors. Blue for the wives, red for the handmaids, domestics wear green. This is a very structured and religious society. What did I wear then, in the old days? Shorts, jeans, jogging pants. Do you have any oranges? Not today. How about grapefruit? Forget it. All that stuff comes from Florida. We got nothing from Florida. The terrorists have gotten the railway line again. I guess I'll have two pounds of apples then. Let me check the storeroom. Hello. I saw you walk in. Janine. Of Warren. I'm of Warren now. This is your partner? This is of Glenn. That should be the fruit. May the good Lord open. I have some news. What? I've just come from the doctors. I'm expecting. Oh, that's right. a big <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. I, I just had to come over and tell you. I'm glad you did. And how are things going with you? Fine. Nothing happened yet, huh? Not yet. Oh, and this is your third posting in all. No more apples. What have you got? If I were you, I'd get some There's help. Some beans. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, we'll take a couple pounds of beans. You have a nice day Sorry. now. Right. Under his eye? Under his eye. I need to go to All Flesh, get some chicken. I don't think I've got Come on out, come my day. Excuse me, ladies. That's the food. food. Uh, they're asking if they can take your picture. Uh, take photograph, no? please, can we? It's not allowed. Huh? It's not allowed. The women here uh, have different uh, customs. That is why they cover themselves uh, up. Uh, to stare at them through the lens of a camera and for them an experience of violation. Look nice this. Uh, uh, I'm sorry? Do they have freedom? Freedom? They are free? Freedom. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, miss. They want to know, are you happy? Yes, we are very happy. She says yes. Oh, <laughs> the people here lead a very disciplined lifestyle. It's what they choose. We should respect that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Follow me. We're now going into the center of Gilead. And I would ask you to respect the customs of this place, my ladies, covering yourselves up and putting on the gowns provided at the entrance. Are you ready to go back yet? Can we go via the church? All right. But I know as well as she does that she isn't really interested in the church. She wants to see who's hanging from the wall. These two are doctors, look. Angel makers. Angel makers. Abortionists. People still do that? Why would anyone want to now? You don't know anything, do you? What do you mean? They would have been abortion doctors in the old world. They go through all the hospital records, find out who they all were. They catch up with them eventually. But what they did wasn't a crime in the old world. Wasn't against the law, you mean. It was still a crime in the eyes of the good Lord. The bags over the heads make the men look like dolls on which faces have not yet been painted. But on one there's blood which has seeped through the white cloth where the mouth must be. It makes another mouth, a small red one, like the mouths painted with thick brushes by kindergarten children. A child's idea of a smile. We should go back. Yes. Alfred, it's a beautiful May day. Yes. Praise be. It's curious how words and phrases jump out at you from some distant past. May day used to be a distress signal a long time ago in one of those wars we studied in high school. May day, May day. For pilots whose planes had been hit and ships, was it ships too? At sea. It was Luke who told me where it came from. It's nothing to do with the month of May, he said. It's French. A day, help. May day. Help me. May day mornings fill me with hope and joy. Do you know what I mean? It's the Lord's doing. Of course. That's what I mean. We better get back. Mm. 
My room. A chair, a table, a lamp, a single bed, a wardrobe. Nothing takes place in the bed except sleep or no sleep. The window only opens partly and the glass is shatterproof. I decided to explore the room. I didn't want to do it all at once. I wanted to make it last. I divided the room into sections in my head. I allowed myself one section a day, which I would examine with the greatest minuteness. I hear Moira's voice in my head saying I'm crazy, but I do it anyway. One day I found, on the wall behind the wardrobe, scratched with a pin or maybe just a fingernail, a picture. Like a, a child's matchstick drawing. A man with a beard. A woman with dots all over her round face. Like freckles. A child and a dog. I wonder who she was. Or is. And what became of her. Perhaps I will try to find out. I want you to think of God as a national resource. Uh, He's always been there, ready to... The commander's wife seems more relaxed with me recently. The... Sometimes in the evenings when no the commander is still at work, she allows me to watch television that with her. Make him is it any surprise that the forces of evil were able to pervade? Is it any surprise the world got contaminated? You recognize me, don't you? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. You know who I am? Not now, but before. Before? I think so. From TV? Were you? Serena Joy. That's me. <laughs> Did you ever watch any of my shows? Oh, yes. I was on TV every day. <laughs> like him. Everyone loved me. I was invited to speak all over the country. Yeah. I guess those days are over now. My work's been done. Still, I don't know if I've ever received the full recognition I deserved for what I did. Why, all of a sudden, is it so hard to procreate? <laughs> well, think about it. So I was living in the household of the TV evangelist Serena Joy. Yeah. Things were worse than I thought. How she has aged. Is it really any surprise that he said, hey, bud, if you don't want my gift, I'll take it back? The first time I saw her on television, I was eight or nine. It was when my mother was away at demonstrations, fighting for women's rights and stuff. I sometimes stayed at my grandmother's place. On Sunday evening, she would always watch the Growing Souls Gospel Hour. Serena Joy was the lead soprano. She could smile and cry at the same time. A tear sliding gracefully down her cheek as if on cue, as her voice lifted through its highest notes, tremulous, effortless. It was after that she went on to other things. Hello, and welcome to the Serena Joy Show. Today we look at the tragic cost to family life of women who go to work. Join me for the next half hour as we debate women's responsibility to become better homemakers. That's straight after this commercial break. Serena Joy was never her real name, not even in the old world. Her real name was Pam. I read that in a profile on her in a news magazine, Time or Newsweek. Don't be fooled by the lies peddled by leftist feminist manipulators who tell you that you've got to have equal this and equal that. For too long, they have had it all their way. Don't be swayed by their lies. Be suspicious 
when they try to influence you with their ever so reasonable manner. Don't be fooled. These people have already submitted to the devil. And they want to destroy you and your family. Oh. She wasn't singing anymore by then. She oh, was yes, making friends. speeches. Oh, she was good at it. Look, there is no equal. Her speeches men were about the sanctity of the home God and about how women different. should stay there. God intended women to be the nest builder, to look after the family, to stay at home. And I think that all of you know that in your hearts. But Serena Joy didn't stay at home herself. She made speeches instead and presented this failure of hers as a sacrifice she was making for the good of all. Can you tell me why you have come here today? Absolutely, I sure can. We're here to protest against the slaughtering of unborn babies. Around that time, someone tried to shoot her. And I know that most of America supports us. And let me tell you, we are not moving. We will blockade this clinic no, wait, this house of murder for as long as it takes. And what do you hope to achieve? We want people to realize what is going on, and if the police drag us away, that is fine. Look, we know who's doing these operations. We have got a register of names and addresses of all the doctors who have carried out abortions, and you know what? They are not going to get away with it. Is that a threat? No, sir, it is a principle. If you commit a crime, one day you're going to get punished. Let me make this clear. This is murder. This is murder. This is murder. One day the pre-born are going to receive justice. Man, they a bitch. What's going on here? The reporter was killed, but Serena Joy survived. She called it a miracle. She doesn't have a TV show anymore. She doesn't make speeches. She doesn't go to work. She stays in her home, looks after her garden, but it doesn't seem to agree with her. She fought for women to stay at home. How furious she must be now that she's been taken at her word. With whoever we please, to have children when it suited us, not when it suited the Lord. Uh, that's enough to now. control the most precious gift he gave us. I think we both need to get some rest. Tomorrow's the big day. Yes. I'll go back to my room. May I ask you something? What? The last one who stayed in my room before me. Which one? The one with freckles. You knew her? Uh, yes, I knew her before. Um, <laughs> we were at the Rachel and Leah Reeducation Center together. I heard she was here. She didn't work out. She wasn't successful? She didn't work out. Oh. I'll go back to my room then. I sit in my room. I want Luke here so badly. I want to be held and told my name. I repeat my former name, remind myself of what I once could do, how others saw me. I want to be with someone. But I try not to think too much. Like other things now, thought must be rationed. There's a lot that doesn't bear thinking about. Thinking can hurt our chances. Once a month, I'm taken by Joseph to the doctors for tests. Urine, hormones, cancer smear, blood tests. We're here, ma'am. The same as before, except now it's obligatory. No, don't try the door. It's locked. I'll come around and open it. Try to relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. Thank you. When is your next ceremony? Tonight. Good. Good. I see from your file that this is your third posting? Yes. Nothing happened? No, nothing. Shame. You're in good shape as far as I can tell, and you had a child before in the old world. Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Daisy. I'm sorry. I, no, I didn't mean to upset it's you. It's all right. It's just that I miss her. I understand. May I get dressed now? 
I could help you. What? I could help you. I've helped others. Help me how? How do you think? The door's locked. No one will come in. They'll never know it isn't his. Most of these old guys can't make it anymore, or they're sterile. Lots of women do it. You want a baby, don't you? It'd only take a minute. It's too dangerous. You don't have a lot of time left. If you don't succeed this time, they'll send you off to the colonies. But it's your life. Think about it. Perhaps next month. Yeah, they have done it with air yes. Twenty-first battalion of games of light. Forty-six guerrillas are captured and marched out of the Alfred. forest. They will be taken to a detention center where they will be tried and sentenced. It's been a My long campaign. My husband is late as usual, so he might as well sit down. And it's another successful mission over. Another job well done. I thought we could use this opportunity to straighten a few hey, things out. Is it cold out there? It's freezing, my in fact, it has been the cold and the now, I don't know how things were conducted at your previous down. postings. I don't Anderson care. But in this household, you should know that we take a strictly orthodox approach. What will happen to the, terrorists now? the ceremony is a means well, to an Mike, end. That's all it is. To to you don't have to enjoy it. You don't have to like it. I would prefer it if you didn't. Be tried in the usual no moaning. Way, no, details are no thrusting. No crying out. Just keep your Thank mouth you, and eyes you shut. You understand? Yes. That's all that's required. Yeah. Just shut yourself off. Pray or something. Yes? Yes, I understand. An underground espionage ring has been cracked by a team of eyes working with an inside informant. The ring has been smuggling precious national resources over the border to Canada. Five members of the heretical Good evening. Quakers have been arrested and more arrested. I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. We've been watching the news. Chad McCloud was at the scene. Good. The eyes burst into the door at five this morning. The Quakers put up little to no resistance, but one was shot as he tried to make his escape. He died later in hospital. Chad Bring me the good book. There has and a glass of water. news from the besieged city of Detroit, which we have been reliably informed is soon to surrender to our forces. It's been a long and sustained campaign, and the controversial bombing of the city seems to have worked. The commander leading the offensive, Reverend General David Nunn. Rachel was childless, and when she saw that she bore Jacob no children, she became jealous of her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or I shall die. <laughs> and Jacob said angrily to Rachel, Can I take the place of God who denied thee children? And she said, here is my slave girl, Bilhah. Lie with her, and she shall bear upon my knees that I may also have children by her. And so she gave him her slave girl, Bilhah. And Jacob lay with her. Praise be. Brady. Yes. Shall we go upstairs? see if I were to open my eyes would be the large white canopy of her four-poster bed suspended like a sagging cloud above us above me towards the head of the bed she is arranged outspread her legs apart I lie between them my head on her stomach her pubic bone under the base of my skull her thighs on either side of me 
she holds my hands to signify that we are one flesh, one being. The rings of her left hand cut into my fingers. It may or may not be revenge. <laughs> The commander is preoccupied like a man humming to himself in the shower. Like a man who has other things on his mind. It's as if he's somewhere else waiting for a bus to arrive. God, there's something hilarious about this whole situation. I hear Moira in my head. She's killing herself laughing, laughing. But I don't dare laugh. I don't dare. Thank you. I leave you to rest now. Yes. You can get up now. Get up and get out. And this is what I do when I'm back in my room. I take off my clothes and put on my nightgown. I look for the pad of butter in the toe of my right shoe where I hid it after dinner. Much of it is sunk into the paper I wrapped it in. I rub the butter over my face, work it into the skin of my hands. There's no longer any hand lotion or face cream. Not for us. And such things are considered vanities. We are containers. It's only the insides of our bodies that are important. This was the decree of the wives. This absence of hand lotion. They don't want us to look attractive. For them, Things are bad enough. Nobody dies from lack of sex. It's lack of love we die from. All the people I could love are dead or elsewhere. Who knows where they are now or what their names are now. They might as well be nowhere. As I am for them. It was after the chase from the border where we had tried to cross. There was the dirt road and the woods. And we jumped out of the car and began to run. Me, Luke, and Daisy. Somehow we got separated in the chase. I don't know what happened to Luke. Stay where you are. Do not get up. Don't get your Put your arms up in front of you. Don't, don't. No, it's okay. It's all right, honey. It's okay. Don't take my time. No, where are you? Shut up! Shut up! Don't take my dog! Of all the dreams, this is the worst. Here is what I believe. I believe Luke is lying face down in a thicket, a tangle of bracken. What is left of him? His hair, the bones, the plaid wool shirt, green and black, the leather belt, the work boots. I know exactly what he was wearing. I can see his clothes in my mind, bright as a full-color advertisement from an ancient magazine. Though not his face, not so well. His face is beginning to fade. I pray his death was painless. One shot through the back of the skull, one flash, darkness or pain, dull I hope, like the word thud, only the one and then silence. I believe this. <laughs> I also believe that they didn't catch him after all and that he made it. 
reached the bank, swam the river, crossed the border, dragged himself up on the far shore, teeth chattering, found his way to a nearby farmhouse. Hello? Hello? Yeah, can I help you? <coughs> was allowed in. Perhaps they were Quakers. The woman made him some hot coffee and gave him a set of her husband's clothes. I picture the clothes. It comforts me to dress him warmly. They will smuggle him inland where he will make contact with the others. Perhaps he's met up with Moira. Perhaps they're part of something. There must be a resistance, a government in exile. Someone must be out there. There must be a resistance, or where do all the criminals come from on the television? Any day now, there may be a message from him. It will come in the most unexpected way from the least likely person. Under my plate, on the dinner tray, slipped into my hand as I reached the tokens across the counter in his shop. The message will say that I must have patience. Sooner or later, he will get me out. We will find Daisy, wherever they've put her. She'll remember us. And we will be all three of us together. Come here. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> Don't struggle, dear. <laughs> it tickles. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's a beauty. It's like a huge fruit, big and ripe. Let me feel. <laughs> I've warned you won't keep still. I'm sorry, but it tickles. <laughs> we are so pleased with her. Rita. Rita. Go and get Alfred from her room. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Fred should see this. It might inspire her. More tea, Mildred. Thank you. Cookie? Thanks. Would you like one, dear? Oh, Kit. no. You'll spoil her. Too much sugar is bad for them. Oh, just this once, Mildred. Oh, yes. Can I, ma'am? Please. Go on. Oh, thank you. She's more like a daughter, really. One of the family. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, Fred. Come in here. This is my friend, Mrs. McLeod, and this is a Warren, her handmaid. Hello. You know each other? Yes, we were re-educated together. A oh. Warren is expecting. <laughs> I know. You can sit down now, <clears throat> both of you. She is such a healthy girl. No Agent Orange in the family. We checked the records. You can never be too careful. You've been so lucky. I'll say. I'll say. But Morin was very thorough this time because we've had some bad experiences. But some of the ones that you get, they, they don't even keep themselves clean. You know, they won't give you a smile. They mope in their rooms. They don't wash their hair. The smell. The last one we had, I had to get the domestics to hold her down in the bathtub. And then she stopped eating. <laughs> You don't want to know. <laughs> of Warren's a good girl. And I suppose your husband will be getting a promotion if this works out. Well, we don't want to count our chickens, but there are words going about. There are words. <laughs> but you'll have one soon. I feel sure of it. So, uh, so this is your handmaid. Well, let's get a look at her. Come over here. Oh, Fred, come here. Turn around for Mrs. McLeod. Mm. Attractive. What's she like? <sighs> She's only been here a few months. And well, nothing's happened yet? No, not yet. <clears throat> How's Zora, Fred? No, not yet. Hmm. You haven't had much luck, really. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Well, with all that business with the last one. Mm. Now, what did they do to her in the end? <sighs> you must be so excited. I bet you could hardly wait. <laughs> This is your third home, I understand. Joseph. You're not supposed to talk to me. Just passing the time of day. I have a message. What? I have a message. From who? From the commander. He wants to see you in his office. When? Tomorrow in the evening. See. Six, six thirty after his wife has gone to her room. Is that all right? 
I don't know. This is the surgery. I'll be waiting at the front as usual. Can I have your ID? Thank you. Let me just scan your tattoo. Alrighty. Of Fred Handmaiden 2012. Why don't you take a seat over there? Dr. McLean is running a little behind this morning. McLean? Yes. But I see Dr. Peters. Oh, Dr. Peters isn't with us anymore. Isn't with you? It's Dr. McLean now. But what happened to Dr. Peters? He's gone. Gone? Look, I I'm busy. Do you have a problem? No. Well, then, take a seat and wait to be called. Sure. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Close the door behind you. Hello. Sit down. You must find this strange. I guess it is a little strange. Here. I have a little present for you. It's an old one. From the 70s, I think. A Vogue. I thought you might like to look at it. It's not permitted. And here it is. Would you like to see it? Would you? Yes. Why do you have this? Some of us retain an appreciation of the old things. But these were supposed to have been burned. Yes. Within those pages is promise. An endless series of possibilities. Adventure. Rejuvenation. Pain overcome and transcended. Endless love. Immortality. That's why they had to be destroyed. Why show this to me? Who else would I show it to? What about your wife? No. She wouldn't understand. We don't seem to have that much in common. We've grown apart. Oh. I thought perhaps we could meet from time to time outside the, uh, you know. It's so impersonal. I see. I want... I want you to kiss me. I'm serious. I want you to kiss me. All right. Not like that. Like you meant it. What's the matter? I can't. Just... 
Perhaps we could do something else. What? I would like... This may sound silly. I would like you to play a game of Scrabble with me. <laughs> do you know how to play? Yes. Would you play with me? Why? Why? Because it's forbidden. All right. You start. You're late. I had to wait for her to go to bed. The commander and I have an arrangement. It's not the first such arrangement in history. I visit him two or three nights a week, always after dinner, but only when I get the signal. The signal is Joseph. If he's polishing the car when I set out for the shopping. What is it you miss most about the old world? Hand lotion. What? Hand lotion or face lotion. My skin gets very dry. Well, it doesn't look very dry. I use butter when I can get it, or margarine. A lot of the time, it's margarine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick I learned at the Rachel and Leah Center where I was re-educated. That's very clever. Do you think you could get me some hand lotion? I should think so. Supposing she smells it on you. I'd be careful. Besides, she's never that close to me. Sometimes she is. Well, then I won't use it on those nights. <laughs> oh, Lord. Give us success today. When the ceremony came around again, I found things were changed. I don't remember. Let us be the free. Now there is an awkwardness there hadn't been before. The lights are on as usual, since Serena Joy always avoids anything that would create an aura of romance or eroticism, however slight. It's like being on an operating table in the full glare. I feel him actually looking at me, and I don't like it. He could give me away so easily by a look, by a gesture. He reaches his hand to touch my face. I move my head to the side to warn him away, hoping Serena Joy hasn't noticed. Don't ever do that again. Do what? Try to touch me like that when we're... when she's there. You could get me transferred to the colonies, or worse, you know that. I just... I find it... impersonal. How long did it take you to find that out? Tell me. Is that what happened to the last one? What do you mean? The handmaid before me. Was she sent to the colonies? No. She used to see you too, didn't she? Alone like this. What happened to her? She didn't work out. What happened to her? She moved on. Look, look, I've got something for you. What? The hand lotion you asked for. Trouble is, I don't have anywhere to keep it. In your room? They'd find it. Someone would find it. Why? They look. They look in all our rooms. What for? Razor blades. Books. Writing. Black market stuff. All the things we aren't supposed to have. You ought to know. Then you'll have to keep it here. Thank you. You have everything on your list? Yes. Do you mind if we go by the auto church? I want to get a soul scroll. Fine. No point going by the wall. There won't be anyone there. They don't leave the bodies hanging as long in the summer because of the flies. Be ashamed with transgress without cause. 
to me belong to vengeance. Welcome to the fully automated house of the Lord. Please select a prayer. I promise to get the Beatitudes for the domestic in my house. Please insert a token. Blessed be the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed be the silent, for they shall be given strength. Blessed be those who obey the law, for they I knew they changed things and left things out, but there was no way of checking. There's a Bible in every home, but locked up. We can be read to from it by the head of our household. We can go to the auto church and get a printout of the passage, but we cannot read it ourselves. After all, it's an incendiary device. Who knows what we'd make of it if we ever got our hands on one. serve their country, for by doing so, they will be serving their God. Amen. Amen. Please take your soul scrolls printout. May the Lord make you have a nice day. Shall we sit in the chapel for a bit? I will abolish Let them return and they shall be burned with tears and devoured with burning. Do you think God listens to these machines? You mustn't ask me that. I don't. I think we should go. I don't think this is a godly country. I... You can say it. Neither do I. words good and evil are each only one letter short of God and devil. I'd like to know what you think. I don't think a lot. Oh, come now. I'm interested in your opinions. You're intelligent enough. You must have opinions. I don't hear opinions too often these days. What do you want my opinion on? What we've achieved in the past decade. I don't have an opinion. Oh, come on. I'd like to hear what you think. What did we overlook? How about love? Love? What kind of love? What kind of love? How about falling in love? Oh, yes. I've read the magazines. That's what they were publishing, wasn't it? But look at the stats, my dear. Was it really worth it falling in love? Arranged marriages have always worked out just as well, if not better. 
those years when people could choose anyone they wanted were just an anomaly, historically speaking. Well, and how about just loving thy neighbor kind of love? That will come. You see, you need to understand that all change is painful. We have embarked on one of the most ambitious projects this world has ever seen. We have brought peace and order where there was chaos and disorder. Whatever you say. We thought we could make the world better. Better? How can you think this is better? Better never means better for everyone. It always means worse for some. But on balance, I believe we've given more than we've taken away. Love will come in time. What did you do before? What were you? Oh, I was in market research to begin with. After that, I sort of branched out. You might say I'm sort of a problem solver. Hmm. Well, maybe you could help me solve a problem. Something I've been wondering about. The one before me. She had freckles, right? Did you know her? Not exactly. I, I keep finding these little pictures in my room. Inside the cupboard, on the walls. More scratch drawings, really, of stick people. And very small. One of the characters, a woman, has freckles. She appears in all the pictures I've found so far. I see. They're family scenes, mainly. Her, a man and a child in front of a house. I guess she had a family in the old days. Her pushing a pram, her lying on a bed. Her crying. She hanged herself, right? you know she drew pictures of that too she must have been planning to do it for a while Rita found her poor girl <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't come here anymore I thought you were enjoying it I wish you would. You want my life to be bearable to me? Yes. Yes, I do. I would prefer it. Well, then... What would you like? Besides the hand lotion? I would like... I would like to know... Whatever there is to know. What's going on. How it all works. Everything. In episode two of The Handmaid's Tale, by Margaret Atwood, the part of Offred was played by Marsha Dietlin, Serena Joy by Leslie Hendricks, The Commander by Earl Hindman, Off Glen by Mireille Enos, Janine by Emma Roberts, Dr. Peters by Bruce Sabbath, Rita by Shannon Williams, Mildred by Kristen Marks. Other parts were played by Dylan Chalfie and members of the company. The original score was composed by Sasha Putnam, Nick Russell Pavia, and Mitch Agugwa. The Handmaid's Tale is a Goldhawk Universal production for BBC Radio 4. It was produced by Jane Quill and dramatised and directed by John Dryden. Every night when I go to bed, I think, in the morning, I will wake up in my own house and things will be back the way they were. I'll be with Luke and Daisy and all this will be a bad dream. It hasn't happened this morning either. Let us pray. Lord God, most divine King of Kings, be with us now for the act we are about to perform in your name. Yes, Lord. Bless us with your strength and power as we come together to do your work. Amen. We thank you for sending us your handmaiden of Fred into our household. Yes. And ask you give us, through a Fred, a child. <laughs>
<laughs> we draw on the example you gave us in Rachel and her servant Bilhah in the good book. As you gave Rachel a child through her maid servant, we ask for a child through ours. In your name, God, give Serena Joy and I a child this day. <laughs> Amen. Praise be. Uh, praise be. Is everyone ready? My dear. <laughs> Yes. My friend? Yes. Shall we go upstairs then? Sanity is a valuable possession. I hoard it in the way people once hoarded money. I save it so I will have enough when the time comes. When someone will come to rescue me. Good morning, Alfred. Blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. Are you ready to go shopping? Yes. It's such a beautiful day. Shall we go the long way down by the river? Yes. Mm. Of Glenn says she works for May Day. The resistance. I hope she does. We can help you get out. Really? There's a network of safe houses. They smuggle people across the border to Canada. Then why don't you escape? Agents are needed here. It's risky work, but somebody has to do it. Do you know a Moira? Moira? Why? She used to be my best friend. She escaped from the Rachel and Leah Re-Education Center. Moira. Yeah, I think we helped her get out. Really? Keep walking. Are you trying to get us killed? I'm sorry. Look, it isn't safe even here. You've got to be more careful. I want to find my husband and daughter. Perhaps we can help. I can't make any promises. But first, you have to do something for us. What? We know you're seeing him. Who? your commander we know you're seeing him alone outside of ceremony without his wife present how we just know i have to see him i can't say no of course you can't but find out about him and tell us find out what find out what he does see if you can get anything on him any indiscretion anything provable anything we can use later on Anything you can, all right? I'll try. Oh, Fred! Yes, you. Come over here. I want you. Oh, it's too damn close in there. Sit down. Well, then. Nothing yet. No, nothing. Ah, it's too bad. Time's running out. Yes. Well, tomorrow it comes round again. Maybe we'll get lucky this time. Maybe. Well, maybe he can't. Well, maybe. Maybe you should try it another way. What other way? Another man... Oh, don't play the innocent. I find it so tiresome. It's against the law. Yes, I know you can't officially, but it's done. Women do it all the time. All the time. With doctors, you mean? Well, some do that. But it doesn't have to be a doctor. It could be someone we trust. Who? I was thinking of him. Over there, washing the car. Joseph? Joseph. He's been with us a long time. He's loyal. I could fix it with him. What about the commander? <laughs> well, we just won't tell him, will we? You might as well. 
Maybe I could get something for you. Something you want? What's that? A picture of her, your little girl. But only maybe. <laughs> Would you like a cigarette? Yeah, not here. I'll give you one to take up to your room. You can ask Rita for a match. You tell her that I said so. It's only one, though. You don't want to ruin your health. I'll come to your room tonight at midnight, and I will take you down to Joseph's quarters. All right? Yes. Hmm. Well, midnight, then. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. <laughs> you remember my friend, Mrs. McLeod, and her handmaid of Warren? Oh, of course you do. Of Warren. <laughs> oh, you were friends, weren't you? Well, the baby, they just had it. It turned out to be no good after all. A shredder. A shredder? Oh. Look like a monster, so I hear. Uh, it's tragic. It's contaminated with Agent Orange, they reckon. Come in. My secret visits to the Commander have become a habit. The Commander's and my secret habit. Greetings. Two or three times a week, as soon as Serena Joy goes up to her room, I make my way down the hallway to his room. What we do there is talk and play Scrabble. I guess he just wants someone to be able to relax with. But tonight was different. And how is my fair little one this evening? I'm fine. Up for a little excitement? Pardon? Tonight, I have a little surprise for you. Something you like. What's that? Chinese checkers? Something better. Where did you get it? I didn't know your size. I hope it fits. You expect me to put this on? I've never worn anything like this in my life. But you want to, don't you? Well... It's a disguise. You'll need to paint your face, too. I've got the stuff for it. You'll never get in without it. In where? Tonight, I am taking you out. Out? Out of here. But where? You'll see. I can't be too late. I, I have to get up early in the morning. I think you need a bit of an escape. Come on, put it on. I don't want you to watch me. No. No, of course not. You can change behind that screen. It's a fine evening, sir. Yes. Here, sir? Yes. And I will have to ask you to get down on the floor of the car down. Don't worry, it's not exactly a checkpoint. We have to go through the gateway. Wives are not allowed, you see. Good evening. Hi there. It's pretty crowded tonight, but there's a few spaces left up over there. Thanks. Enjoy. Just stay down a bit longer. We're almost there. Joseph, do you have that tag? No. This tag you have to wear on your wrist at all times, do you understand? Yes. Thank you, Joseph. Sir? Come on, we have to be fast. This is the back entrance. It's 
If anyone asks you anything, just say you're an evening rental. An evening rental? Right. Listen, I'm not sure about this. Now don't panic. You'll love it here. Wait till you get inside. Ever been here before? I think so. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Didn't it used to be a hotel in the old days? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready? Have you ever seen anything like it? It's like walking into the past, don't you think? Yes. I try to remember if the past was exactly like this. I'm not sure now. I know it contained these things. Feathers, glitter, lingerie, shorty nightgowns, baby doll pajamas, see-through negligees, cheerleaders outfits. But somehow the mix is different. It's like a masquerade party. They're like oversized children dressed up in clothes they've rummaged from the trunks. It's like a movie. A movie about the past is not the same as the past. Don't gawk. You give yourself away. Just act natural. Just keep your mouth shut and act stupid. Hi, how are you? Oh, Take a seat. <laughs> Is this a club? Well, that's what we call it among ourselves. The club or Jezebels. I thought this sort of thing was strictly forbidden. Well, officially. But everyone's human after all. What does that mean? It means you can't cheat nature. Nature demands variety for men. It stands to reason it's part of the procreation strategy. It's nature's plan. Women know that instinctively. Why did they buy so many different clothes in the old days? Trick men into thinking they were several different women. A new one each day. So now we don't have different clothes. You merely have different women. Solves a lot of problems. Who are these people? It's only for officers and senior officials and trade delegations from overseas, of course. It stimulates trade. No, I mean the women. Some of them are pros. You know, working girls from the old days. They couldn't be assimilated. And the others? Well, there's quite a collection. That one there, the one in green, for instance. She's a sociologist, or was. That one was a lawyer, that one was in business, an executive position, some sort of fast food chain, or maybe it was hotels. We got some pretty smart women here, if all you feel like doing is talking, and they prefer it here, too. <laughs> then I see her. She's standing by the fountain, hanging all over some old guy. There's no mistake. She looks just the same, except she's dressed absurdly in a worn-out bunny suit. Why do men think women dressed up like rabbits are sexy? Look at me. Look at me. Are you all right? Um, y yes. It's, it's just... <laughs> You're not used to it. Yes. Well, I guess it's a long time since you've been to anything like this. Yes. Well, let's get you into the spirit of the place. How about a little drink? I'm not supposed to, as you know. Well, once won't hurt. Anyway, it wouldn't look right if you didn't. No nicotine and alcohol to lose here. You see, they do have some advantages here. All right. What'll it be, then? They got everything. A gin and tonic. Good. I'll be right back with a gin and tonic then. Is is there a washroom? Well, of course. I need to go to it. It's over there. What if someone stops me? Just show them your tag. It'll be all right. They'll know you're taken. I 
I'll walk straight towards her. Look at me. Her eyes slide over me as if I'm just another palm tree, another chair. Come on, Moira. Just look at me. Can I see you down here quite often? Well, it helps me wind down. Oh, that's great. Well, that's what we're here to help you do. Yeah. But you know, there's a girl I keep seeing here, but each time I try to get her, she's already taken. Is there a queuing system or what? <laughs> no queuing. First there, first come. Maybe if you point her out to me, I'll arrange things. Oh, you girls, you're just so helpful. Yeah. Moira. Sure. Okay. Whoa, are you new? Oh, yeah. What's your name? I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to waste your time. I'm taken already. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> maybe in the mushroom. She knew? Uh, I think maybe there's a delegation or something from Asia coming later on. Sometimes they bring in girls from other clubs to make up numbers. I don't know. Why don't you point at that girl to me and I'll go make arrangements. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, she sure. <laughs> This would be the fruit. What? Uh, is this the mushroom? You've got 15 minutes, no more. Not you. You were just there. I need to go again. Rest break once an hour, you know the rules. Hi there. Hi. <coughs> <coughs> Can I uh, borrow some lipstick? Oh, I don't have any. Oh. Uh, with me. Mm. Mm, you know? Yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's, um, <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> oh, pretty does. <laughs> the pretty pink does. The pretty pink. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh. So, it's all right. I'm Moira. It's all right. Don't worry about her. She's just getting into the party mood. You look like the horror of Babylon. Isn't that what I'm supposed to look like? You look like something the cat dragged in. Government issue. I guess they thought it was me. I can't believe it's you. Don't do that. Your eyes will run. Anyway, there isn't time. Let's sit down. What the hell are you doing here? Not that it isn't great to see you, but what'd you do wrong? Laugh at his dick? Is it bugged? Oh, probably. You want to smoke? I'd love one. On the other hand, it might not be. I can't imagine they'd care about anything you have to say. They've already heard most of it, and anyway, nobody gets out of here except in a black van, but you must know that if you're here. I'm temporary. It's just tonight. I'm not supposed to be here at all. He smuggled me in. Who? My commander. Mm, some of them do that. They get a kick out of it. It's like screwing on the altar or something. Your gang are supposed to be such chaste vessels. I really thought you'd escaped. I did. Only I got caught. You're the only person I know ever to escape from the center. All this time, I thought you were free. You were a beacon. Don't talk like that. Tell me what happened. What's the point? But she knew there was a point. So she did. Not too tight. Please. I don't know why you're doing this to me, Myra. All right. We're at the re-education center. I got that old hag Aunt Elizabeth tied up like a Christmas turkey behind the furnace. Open your mouth. I have always been fair and honest with you. She's given me all this stuff oh. about how well she's always treated us. Yeah, sure, Aunt Elizabeth. So I gag her. Wider. Uh -huh. There. Don't struggle or you'll choke. I wanted to kill her. I could kill you, you know. I could injure you so badly you'd never feel good in your body again. Just remember I didn't if it ever comes to that, all right? I really felt like it, but now I'm just as glad I didn't or things would be a lot worse for me. I couldn't believe how easy it was to get out of the center. In that brown outfit, I just walked right through. Can I see your pass? Of course, I had Aunt Elizabeth's pass. That helped. Thank you. Have a nice day. With the Lord's help, I will. Hmm. 
I kept going as if I knew where I was heading till I was out of sight. I didn't have any great plan. Oh, there were more spot checks than I remember from before. They were all over the place. I knew it wouldn't look right if I turned around in full view and went back. Thank you very much. Uh, miss! Miss! Yes. Could you join the line, please? So I bluffed it through, the same as I had at the gate. Your papers, please. I was terrified. Sorry to inconvenience you, ma'am. Oh, what's going on? Terrorist warning, security alert. Thank you very much. God bless you. Papers, please. But I only had so much time before they found the old bat and sent out the alarm. Soon enough, they'd be looking for me. One fake ant on foot. I tried to think of someone. I ran over and over the people I knew. Before they busted the magazine where I worked in the old days, we divided the mailing list among us, and we each memorized a section before destroying it. So I tried to recall my section of the list. We had the religious denominations marked next to each name. You know, Q for Quaker, B for Baptists. That way we knew who to invite to marches and things. For instance, it was no good calling on the seas to do abortion stuff. You know, not that we'd done much of that lately. Anyway, I figure a married couple would be safest, preferably Quakers. Yes? Hello, I'm doing a questionnaire for the local council. I'm wondering if you could spare a few moments of your time. Well, so she let me in straight away. But as soon as I was inside, I took off the headgear and told them who I was. We're going to have to ask you to leave. We would like to help you, but we have got kids, you see. Please, there's nowhere for me to go. We can't help you. We've got to think of our kids. Yes. Maybe, honey. No. I'm going to take you to another house. Jim. Honey, I think that's the least we can do. Is that all right? Okay. The first thing we're going to do is get you out of that outfit. If you go upstairs, my wife will fit you in one of her outfits. The other house was Quaker's too, and I'd hit the jackpot because they were a safe house. And bring your old clothes down. We'll incinerate them in the stove. We're going to try and get you out of the country. Really? How? You don't need to know how. We have a network of stations and safe houses. They were better organized than you'd think. They'd infiltrated a couple of useful places. One of them was the post office. They had a driver there with one of those handy little trucks. I made it over the bridge and into the city proper in a mail sack. You can come out now. Where am I? Well, that doesn't matter. You're going to be here for a few days. Can I ask you something? Hmm? Why are you helping me? Why is anyone helping me? Hmm. Don't take it personally, okay? I'm doing it for religious reasons. They got him soon after that. He ended up hanging on the wall. I was underground, it must have been eight or nine months, taken from one safe house to another. They weren't all Quakers. Some of them weren't even religious. They were just people who didn't like the way things were going. They knew more or less what would happen to them if they were caught. Not in detail, but they knew. I almost made it out. They got me up as far as Salem, and then in a truck full of chickens in a main. They were planning to get me across the border there. Quickly. Straight down to the jetty. There. Do you see the boat with the eye painted on it? Yes. Someone is waiting for you there. Good luck. Thank you. Just take care now. Thank you. So, I don't know what happened. Maybe somebody got suspicious. Maybe they thought the guy was out in his boat at night too much. By that time, it must have been crawling with guardians and eyes up there and everywhere else close to the border. Don't move. Stay exactly where you are. Put your hands on your head. Down! 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 Down!
I thought this was the end of the road for me. <laughs> but you know what they did? They showed me a movie. It was about life in the colonies. I'm going to show you something that may disturb you somewhat. You will not like what you see, but it is important that you do see it. This woman is 30 years old. Her nose has fallen off. This woman is 25. See how her skin pulls away like rubber gloves? They were once women like you, women with a future. But they threw all their many chances away. Women like you. Now, they are workers in the cleanup squads in the colonies. The average lifespan for a worker in the colonies is three years. They are sent in to clean up after radiation spills. They clear away bodies after a battle, making fires with which to burn them. They treat the toxic dumps with neutralizing chemicals. I was given a choice. The colonies are this. Well, shit, nobody but a nun would pick the colonies. So here I am at Jezebel's. It's not too bad. You know, you should figure out some way of getting in here. Where you don't mean that. The food's all right, and there's drink and cigarettes, and we only have to work nights. They even give you face cream. I'll be good for a few more years yet. Moira, you're not planning on staying. How do you mean? You've always got a plan to, to get out. You must have. Why would I want to leave? Because. Oh, honey. I couldn't leave here even if I wanted to. Why not? When you came into the washrooms, did the aunt give you one of these? Yes. That's why we come in here. Well, what is it? MFH. You haven't tried it? MFH? Manna from heaven. We get one sachet an hour. You unwrap it. You arrange the powder into two lines, like that. Then one side. <laughs> then the other. <sighs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> now do you get it? <laughs> That's why I can never leave this place. <laughs> Here is what I'd like to tell. I'd like to tell how Moira escaped for good this time. Or if I couldn't tell that, I'd like to say she blew up Jezebel's with 50 commanders inside it. I'd like her to end with something daring and spectacular, some outrage, something that would befit her. But as far as I know, that didn't happen. I don't know how she ended, or even if she did, because I never saw her again. I was thinking someone had made you a better offer. <laughs> Sit down. Here's your drink. Thank you. Is everything okay? Hmm. Fine. I have got an offer. What? What is that for? It unlocks a room upstairs. Yeah. 
wait, 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 wait. What, what are you doing? It's tomorrow, isn't it? I thought maybe we could jump the gun. Maybe it'll work if we do it in more intimate circumstances. Just a minute. Just, I, I have to use the bathroom first. Of course. Why did you bring me here? I thought you might enjoy it for a change. I guess it was sort of an experiment. You said you wanted to know what was going on. We can't stay long. Why not? Because if I'm not back at the house by midnight, I turn into a pumpkin. Or is it a coach? Alfred, wake up. It's time. You ready? Yes. Let's go then. I won't come with you. You go out through the door and turn right. There's another door, it's open. Go up the stairs and knock, he's expecting you. No one will see you, I'll sit right here. Are you sure? The commander's in his bedroom upstairs. He won't come down this late, he never does. Drag? Yes. I don't have much time. I could just squirt it into a bottle and you could pour it in. Don't. Don't take it personally, I get paid. <laughs> when you get paid, I get laid. No romance, okay? Okay. Let's get started. Welcome to the fully automated house of the Lord. Head for the back, we can talk better. Welcome to the fully automated house of the Lord. This is the place of the different. May the Lord open. Janine? 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 Oh, blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. Did you hear about my baby? Yes. 
I'm sorry. Sorry? Her name's Angela. Look. What? Angela. Where? Where do you think? Here, in my arms, silly. We come here every day together. To thank the Lord for all his blessings, don't we, honey? Oh, she's a bit grumpy today. She kept me up all night, didn't you? Janine, there's nothing there. You have a nice day now. Janine. My name is of Warren. Janine, of Warren, whatever. You have a nice day now. No, 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 if you start losing your minds, we're gonna send you to the colonies. You have a nice day now. Janine. You have a nice day now. Janine. anything. No. I, I can't just take things while he's looking. You can go into his room at night when he's not there. Look through his desk. There must be papers, notations. He keeps the door locked. We could get you a key. Don't you want to know who he is, what he does? I can't. I'm too afraid. Anyway, I'd be no good at that. I'd get caught. No, we can get you out. We can get people out have to if they're in danger immediate danger what makes you think i want to leave oh i can't believe you want to stay here why what is there for you here look what i've brought you oh she's a pretty girl isn't she what was her name? Daisy. Oh, Daisy. Well, she's called Faith now. Faith. You can only have it for a minute. I have to return it before they know it's missing. Where does she live? I can't tell you that. Oh, please tell me where oh, she lives. Oh, I knew lives. this would be a mistake. Do you want me to take it away now? No, no. Well, then. She's changed so much. Well, she's very happy and well taken care of. You can be sure of that. Well, see, she's laughing. She has a family now. A real one. Time has not stood still. It has washed over me, washed me away as if I'm nothing more than a woman of sand left by a careless child too near the water. I have been obliterated for her. I'm only a shadow now, far back behind the glib, shiny surface of this photograph. A shadow of a shadow has dead mothers become. You can see it in her eyes. I am not there. I went back to Joseph, time after time on my own, without Serena Joy knowing. I became reckless. I took stupid chances. After being with the commander, I would go upstairs in the usual way. But then I would go along the hall and down the domestic stairs at the back and through the kitchen. I would hurry across the few feet of illuminated lawn, expecting at any moment to hear a shout. I would make my way by touch up the dark staircase and come to rest against the door. Each time I would expect him to be gone. Or worse, I would expect him to say I couldn't come in. He might say he wasn't going to break the rules anymore, put his neck in the noose for my sake. Or even worse, tell me he was no longer interested I was just about to go to bed is it too late <sighs> no I just wasn't sure if you were coming being here with him is safety it's a cave where we huddle together while the storm goes on outside this is a delusion of course this room is one of the most dangerous places I could be. 
If I were caught, there would be no mercy. Joseph. But I'm beyond caring. I think it's happened. I feel it has a couple of weeks and I'll be certain. I love you to death. So will she. But it's yours. It will be yours, really. I want it to be. Why? Why do you want it to be mine? Because I think you're a good man. You don't know anything about me. I think I do. I could tell. How? Not from what you say. You don't talk much. But I can tell. I can just tell. Have you heard of May Day? No, why? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just... I just thought you might have. Listen, I don't want any trouble, and I don't think you want any trouble either. I don't know that word, but already I don't like it. I think you should just forget it. It sounds dangerous, you understand? I'm sure we are all aware of the unfortunate circumstances that bring us all here together on this beautiful morning. But duty is a hard taskmaster, or may I say on this occasion, taskmistress. And it is in the name of duty that we are here today. <coughs> For it is on us that the burden of carrying the torch of the future the cradle of the race is laid. But to the task before us of Charles, you have been found guilty of the attempted murder of your commander's wife. You have been sentenced to be hanged by the neck until life, your life, has expired. Now, here we have a wife. Stand up. Make her stand up. Someone in your privileged position should have known better. You have been found guilty of adultery. We all know the mandatory punishment for adultery. The right hand will be removed from your body from just above the wrist. Today's salvaging is now concluded. But, but you may stand up and form a circle. Orderly now. What's going on? Don't you know? Bring the criminal into the circle. It's a participation. You know the what? rules for a participation. You will wait until I blow the whistle. After that, what you do is up to you until I blow the whistle again. Understood? Yes, yes, yes. This man has been convicted of rape. He was once a guardian of the faith. He has disgraced his uniform. He has abused his position of trust. His partner in viciousness has already been shot. 
penalty for rape, as you know, is death. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verses 23 to 29. I might add that this crime took place at gunpoint. It was also brutal. I will not offend your ears with any details, except to say that one woman was pregnant and the baby died. Are you ready? Are you ready? I saw what you did. What do you mean? Why did you kick him in the head like that? You, uh, I thought you were- Look at me, they're watching. Well, I don't care, I can't help it. What are you doing? Get control of yourself. He wasn't a rapist at all, he was a political. He was one of ours. I kicked him in the head to knock him out, put him out of his misery. Couldn't you see what they were doing to him? Hi there, how you doing? Janine. Did you enjoy the persecution? Look what I got. Just grabbed tight and kept on pulling. D did you get anything? I... I couldn't get close enough. Oh, too bad. You have a nice day now. Blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. Hello, Alfred. Hello. Shall we go to the store? Where's... Of Glen? I am Of Glen. Oh, yes. Of course. Shall we go? Um, yes. I didn't know of Glenn very well. I mean, the former one. Oh? Yes, I I've only known her since May. A around the 1st of May, I think it was. Um, what they used to call May Day. Did they? That isn't a term I remember. I I'm surprised you do. You ought to make an effort to clear your mind of such... Echoes. Now I feel cold. What she is doing is warning me. She isn't one of us, but she knows. I've been stupid again. More than stupid. What am I going to do? Nothing. Nothing. If ulfglen has been caught, it's only a matter of time before she starts talking about me. And I haven't even done anything. All I did was know, and I'll end up hanging from a hook on the wall. You've got the calm down. They know where my child is. What if they bring her, threaten something to her in front of me, or, or do it? I, I can't bear to think what they might do. They're not going to do that. Why not? Because she's dead. What? Not your daughter, of Glenn. She killed herself. But did she talk? I don't know. Am I safe? I'm not sure. You've got to keep on doing everything exactly the way you were before. Don't change anything, otherwise they'll know. Yes. You promise? Yes. Don't slip up. Dear God, I will do anything you like. Just let me off and I'll obliterate myself if that's what you really want. I'll empty myself truly, become a chalice. I'll give up Joseph. I'll forget about the others. I'll stop complaining. I'll accept my lot. I'll sacrifice, I'll repent, I'll abdicate, I'll renounce. I want to keep on living in any form. I resign my body freely to the uses of other. Yes, come in. Alfred, the mistress wants you to come downstairs. Come in, close the door. <clears throat> We've called you down to discuss. Don't you talk! 
You're just as guilty. Oh, Fred, I trusted you. I tried to help you. Well, nothing to say for yourself? About what? I know all about it. You've got the wrong idea. Oh, don't you talk to me! Who told you these lies? I know what I know. What is this? There's lipstick all over it. How could you be so vulgar behind my back? It wasn't what you... I told you last time, don't you touch me. And you, you disgusting slut. You could have left me something. Just like the last one. Well, you'll end up the same. Joseph! Yes, ma'am. Take her to a room, then guard the door. It was you, wasn't it, Joseph? You told her, didn't you? Didn't you? What else did you tell her? Just get in. There are a number of things I could do. I could set fire to the house, for instance. I could bundle up some of my clothes and the sheets and strike my one hidden match. If it didn't catch, that would be that. But if it did, that would at least be an event, a signal of some kind to mark my exit. I, I could tear my bed sheet into strips and twist it into a rope of sorts and tie one into the leg of my bed and try to break the window. Which is shatterproof. Instead, I could noose the bedsheet around my neck, hook myself up in the closet, and choke myself off. You need to go with these men. Who are they? Where are they going to take me? There's no point resisting. You bastard. Mayday. What did you say? Trust me. Go with these men. What is going on? Who are these people? I don't know. They've come to take out Fred. They didn't call anyone. Where are you taking her? What has she done? Can't say, ma'am. Sorry. I need to see your authorization. You have a warrant. Not that we need one, sir, but all is in order. Violation of state secrets. What? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What have I done? Do you realize what you've done to my husband? Serena, don't. Do you? To me? That's enough now. Excuse me, sir. I'm sure she must have broken into my husband's office. Well, there will be an investigation. Well, I'm sure she was acting alone. That's enough, dear. Let go of me! There's a step here. Mind your head. All right, let's go. Whether this is my end or a new beginning, I have no way of knowing. I have given myself over into the hands of strangers because it can't be helped. These tapes, 30 of the type used during the latter part of the 20th century were found in a metal box unearthed on the site of what was once the city of Bangor in what before Gilead would have been the state of Maine. Did our narrator reach the outside world safely and build a new life for herself? We shall never know. All we do know is that she survived long enough to record her account, her handmaid's tale, and for that we should be grateful. We glimpse her for a moment on her terms only, and then she slips from our grasp and flees. As all historians know, the past is a great darkness and filled with echoes. Voices may reach us from it, but what they say to us is imbued with the obscurity of the matrix out of which they come. And try as we may, we cannot always decipher them precisely in the clearer light of our own day. Are there any questions?
In the final episode of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, the part of Offred was played by Marsha Dietlin, Serena Joy by Leslie Hendricks, The Commander by Earl Hindman, Off Glen by Mireille Enos, Joseph by Dylan Shelfie, Moira by Tasha Lawrence, Aunt Lydia by Marianne Seldes, Aunt Elizabeth by Peggy Price, Professor Piaxotto by Dermot Crowley, Janine by Emma Roberts. Other parts were played by Kristen Marks, Bruce Sabbath, Sharon Williams, John Warden, Christopher Burns, Edward Tully, and members of the cast. The script editor was Mike Walker, the sound recordist, Nick Stocker. The original score was composed by Sasha Putnam, Nick Russell Pavia, and Mitch Ogugwa. The Handmaid's Tale is a Goldhawk Universal production for BBC Radio 4. It was produced by Jane Quill and dramatised and directed by John Dryden.